Hi, I'm Brian, and I'm a research scientist on Google Research's brain team and robotics at Google. I'm Carol, and I'm a research scientist on the same team at Google. In this episode of Research Bytes, you'll learn how we at Google Research, in partnership with Everyday Robots, work together to combine some of our latest research in language models and robotics to accomplish two things. One, enable helper robots to deal with more complex tasks that require reasoning, and two, to improve these language models as the robots interact with real, everyday objects in real-world environments. We call our approach SACAM, and in this video, you'll learn about how we answer the following questions. What's the challenge? What did we do? How did we do it? What did we observe? And what's next? What do you say, Brian? Can we get started? I see what you did there, Carol. Recent progress in language models has achieved impressive results for a wide range of language understanding and generation tasks, such as code generation or question answering. However, these models can generate instructions that may not be practical or safe in a real-world context, as they've never interacted with the world. Robotic systems deal directly with perception and interaction, but most of them are currently capable of executing only short, explicitly specified commands, such as pick up an apple, for example. These seemingly simple sensory motor and perception skills are actually the most computationally challenging types of tasks. They only seem easy now because as humans, we've evolved to perform them optimally over millions of years. However, they're actually much more difficult than math skills, for example, which seem challenging because they're just newer to us. We've only been practicing them for thousands of years, and we haven't perfected them yet. This counterintuitive phenomenon is known as Moravec's paradox. Robots are normally trained with clear tasks and rewards. They can struggle with learning to perform tasks that require many steps or responding to goals expressed in more ambiguous terms. An example of such an ambiguous instruction could be, can you bring me a snack to help me recover from my workout? As you can imagine, it can be quite difficult for a robot to understand all the nuance and subtlety in a command like that. We saw this as an opportunity to partner with our colleagues at Google Research to develop the Pathways Language Model, or PALM, which we announced in April, and the team at Everyday Robots, a learning robot moonshot at Alphabet. We thought that combining this advanced language model with a helper robot that can learn by itself would allow us to leverage the benefits of each. On one hand, Language models can help robots deal with more complex and abstract tasks that require reasoning about the world, making our interactions with them more natural. And on the other hand, robotics can provide grounding in the real world for these language models that, as we mentioned earlier, never going to interact with such an environment. This lack of real world experience can make this especially difficult. So here's how we approach this with SACAN. You can think of it as a dialogue between the user and the helper robot facilitated by the language model. The user provides a high-level instruction, and the language model responds with an explicit sequence of steps to accomplish this task. Given a high-level instruction, SACAN combines the following to select the skill to perform. Probabilities from a language model, which represent the probability that a skill is useful for the instruction, and probabilities from a value function, which represent the probability of successfully executing said skill. We refer to these as affordances. They tell us what the robot is capable of given the objects and environment and robot state. If the language model suggests an action that is not possible or not safe to perform, these affordances guide the plan towards ones that are. This process emits a set of steps that combine skills that are both possible and useful. We tested this out on 101 tasks in an office kitchen setting and saw that the robot chose the right set of skills for an instruction and an environment 84% of the time. And SACAN, as a robotic system, performed the instruction correctly 74% of the time. This makes an improvement of 14% in planning, 13% in execution performance, compared to earlier results using FLAN language model, which could indicate continued scaling as models improve. As we're moving from an era of industrial robotics that perform short or explicitly specified commands, to an era of general purpose robots that can work with more complex and abstract commands, we went to see how SACAN performed with examples of more complex tasks. In tests, we found that it was able to handle instructions with even 16 steps. We're also excited that SACAN is highly interpretable. As you can see from this visualization, 
we can see how it makes decisions to pick the right set of skills for the task. If you ask the helper robot to bring you another Coke can after a spill, you will see that the system evaluates the probability of each of the suggested actions it could take. Find a Coke can, pick up the Coke can, bring it to you, and done. Where the blue bar shows how likely the language model estimates the skill to be useful to the task, the red bar shows how likely the system is to successfully execute a skill, and the green bar shows the combined score used to finally select a skill to execute. We believe that this interpretability will allow real and safe user interactions with robots. We are still far from this becoming a household staple, and there's a long road ahead before we can communicate with robots more naturally. However, we are excited to see the possibilities as we continue to explore new approaches to train more human-centered robots. As we explore future directions for this work, we look forward to better understanding how advances in robotics and language model research can continue to move each other forward. To learn more about this work, please check out the links in the description below. If you found this video interesting, please share it, and don't forget to subscribe to the Google Research YouTube channel.